In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this paintbrush transition inside of Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe Photoshop, you first just want to begin by creating a new document that is 1920 by 1080 pixels. So 1920 on the width, 1080 on the height, and then we'll just press create. Now, once you're inside of here, you just want to go ahead and go into the paintbrush tool. So you've got the brush tool, the keyboard shortcut for that is B, but we'll select that. We'll go up to this paintbrush styles option up here. And then we want to go ahead and select a brush type. So we can go into dry media brushes and select one of these or we can go into the wet media brushes or the special effects brushes. You basically just want to select a brush that you like the look of. So I like the look of this one, this charcoal pencil will increase the size. So there you go, about four, five, 600 pixels, somewhere around that region. So let's go 600. There we go, that looks great. And then we'll just make sure the hardness is at 100 if you can see that option. But once you've done that, you just want to go ahead and go layer new layer we'll press ok on this layer and then we'll just draw a brush stroke from screen left up to the top like that of course if you wanted to make this larger though then you can always just go into that brush style and just make that larger so we'll just make a brush across the screen like that and then we'll go layer new layer press ok and we'll do the same thing again in a different direction so we'll go up and across layer new layer again press OK. Then you just want to go across again, layer, new, layer. And you just want to keep repeating this until the screen is filled. So layer, new, layer, press OK. And then we'll go up. Layer, new, layer again, press OK. We'll go across the bottom now. Layer, new, layer again, press OK. And then we'll do this squiggle in the gaps. And then that should be good enough. You want to try and make the screen as black as possible. But if there's a few patches, that's completely fine because we can always just finish this off in Premiere. So once you've done that, you just want to disable that background. So we'll turn off the background and delete that. So everything is now on its own individual transparent layer. And then from there, you want to go file, save as. You want to pop this somewhere. I'm going to pop it on my desktop or actually now I'm going to pop it on one of my hard drives. So I'll pop it there. Then we'll just rename this to brushes. Format should be Photoshop, so .psd, and then we'll press save and press OK on this. And that will save all of those into individual layers in a Photoshop document. Now we'll jump over into Premiere. We'll go into our hard drive where we saved that. So there you go, brushes. We'll drag that into Premiere and then Premiere will load up this window saying import layered file brushes, import as merge all layers. So if it merges the layers, it's gonna turn all of those layers into one still image. We don't want that. We want to go into individual layers and press okay. And that will import all of those into their own folder, their own bin, and they're each on their own individual layer. So from here, we'll select all of those layers, drag them onto our timeline. Now from here, we'll just stack them all on top of each other. So we'll just drag them all on top of each other. And then from there, you can just select all of the layers and we'll just extend the duration of these layers. Now from here, we'll nest this into their own sequence. So we'll right click and select nest, nest. Okay. Now we'll go into that nested sequence and we want to go onto our first layer. So we'll turn off all of the other layers. So we'll select the eyeball icon to turn off all of the other layers. And as you can see, at the moment, we can't see anything because our transparency grid is not enabled. So we'll go into the settings icon over here and go transparency grid. So that will load up our transparency grid and we can see that brush. Now from here, we need to animate this individual layer on and then we need to work through all of the layers to animate those on as well. So we'll select this first layer, we'll zoom out. So we'll go to 50%. Then we'll go into the effect controls window Make sure that layer is selected. Then we'll go to opacity, uh, free draw bezier, and then we'll just draw a mask around the entire frame. Now we'll go maybe half a second forward, create a new keyframe on the mask path by selecting the toggle animation button. Then we'll go back to the very beginning, select mask one, and we'll move these points down off screen. So when we play this back, you can see that animates on. Of course, though, you can see it's got this hard edge. It doesn't look great and it definitely ruins the effect. So we're just going to increase the mask feather like so. 
So we'll increase that to around 100, 200%. And now when we play this back, that's much better. So now we can disable this layer and we can go to video layer two and we can do the same thing again. So we'll draw a mask around the entire frame. We'll create a brand new keyframe on the mask path. Then we'll go back in time a little bit, select mask one, and we'll move these off screen. And then we'll increase the mask feather to around 100 and something. And when we play this back, that now animates on. So if we turn on layer one, you can see one and two are now animating on. So basically what you want to do here is just work through all of your individual layers and just keep repeating this process for every layer. And there you go, once you've animated the mask on all of these individual layers, you'll see you've now got something like this. The only problem is that at the moment, once you've animated all of those in, we can still see the transparency grid behind. So what we're going to do is we'll go to the end of the animation, so around here. We'll pull all of those layers up. We'll go into our project window. We'll go right click, new item, black video. And we'll press OK on this and drag that onto video layer one and extend the duration over to the right. Now at this moment in time, we're just going to create a new keyframe on the opacity at 100%. Then we'll go over to the left by about a second. Then we'll pull the opacity down to 0% and we'll go to the very beginning and play this back. And you can see that now fades in and we've got this effect now taking place and it's filling the screen. But if that opacity was a bit too slow, you can always decrease the gap between those keyframes. So let's play that back again. There you go, that's good. So once you're happy with that, you can now go back into your sequence 01 window, the main composition. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this transition happening. But at the moment, it's not actually doing anything. And that's because we need to enable the track matte key. So what we're going to do is we'll first just begin by moving this transition over to the right so that it's over our second clip. Then we'll go into the track matte key. So we'll search for effects, track matte key. We'll drop that onto our video on video layer one. So food four in my example. Then we'll set the matte to video two. That's because our animation is on video layer two. So we'll go video two, select matte alpha, not matte luma, matte alpha. And when we play this back, you'll see we've got this really nice transition taking place. So in order for this to become a transition, as you can see, you've got this transparent layer here. If we drag this up on top, you can see, unfortunately, it's not going to work the way we want it to work. It's going to come in black. So what we'll do with this looking like this, we'll select the animation and the original footage layer. We'll right click, go nest, press OK on the nested layer, drag this nested layer up onto video layer two. And then we'll drag this over to the right on top of our footage on video layer two. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome paint brush transition now happening. And that was done inside of Photoshop and Premiere. Now, of course, if this transition was too slow or too fast for you, then you can just go back into the nested sequence, go back into this nested sequence, and then you can just change the gap between these keyframes on each individual mask layer like so. But there you go, that is the paintbrush transition now completed inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and Photoshop. So thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.